There's something we haven't discussed yet, and it's really, really important to be able to master CSS. And it's something called the CSS box model. Now, although we haven't mentioned it, you will have seen it on some of the examples that we've looked at. What we're going to do is we're going to have another look at a web page, and we're going to look at it in Chrome and press F12 to open up the Chrome's inspector. And then we can move our mouse around the page and see what happens. What I want you to do is notice the bounding box around the items I'm selecting with my mouse. So here we have a web page. I'm going to press F12 and we've got the inspector up now. I'm going to click on the little magnifying glass so I can select an element on the page and I'm going to just minimize the height of that panel. Now watch as I move the mouse around the elements and select them. Can you see that each element on the page is surrounded by a rectangle or a box? And this is where the box model gets its name because the, every element on an HTML page is seen as being inside a box. But it's not a plain box, it's a box with layers. And so let's have a look at what the box model actually is. Okay, I've got a diagram up on the screen now that shows the box model. And inside we've got a rectangle that holds the content. So if you've got a H1 header, then the H1 header content is found inside this inside box. Around the outside of the content box is a box called padding. And this is a transparent layer. And its purpose is to clear an area around the content. Outside the padding, we've got a border. Now this border is not transparent and it can be coloured and you can specify what you want as the border. This border, if you like, is the outside line to the visible content. It draws a box around the visible content. Outside the border, we've got another transparent layer called the margin. And the purpose of the margin is simply to clear an area, a transparent area, outside of the border. Now, if we go back to that web page again, let's select an element and we can see the box in action. Let's go up to the top, to the top menu, and we'll select, let's say this My Products menu item. And now we can scroll down to the bottom of the CSS here to see the box. So this box that holds My Products menu item it shows the content area is 114.469 pixels wide by 24 pixels high. And then around the content, we've got a padding, which if I move my mouse over in the box area, you can see how it changes colour on the actual web page preview. And we can see from this that we've got a padding, which is a clear area, 20 pixels above the text, 20 pixels below the text, and 24 pixels on the left and the right. The border, if we have a look at that, is only on the right hand side and it's one pixel. Now if you look up here at the button, you can just see the faint line of the border. Let's move out from the border. We then have the clear margin and that is to clear some area around the outside of the border so that if another element was stacked on top, then they wouldn't be pushed up right next to each other because we've got this margin, which is going to separate it from the next item. However, in this particular case, you can see the little minus signs basically mean there is no margin set. But you can have a look at some of the other elements on this page. Let's go down to one of these sidebar widget areas. And we can see here that the main area of the content, let's just reselect it so you can see it. Let's select the whole of the widget area, okay? You can see that the main area of the content is 319 pixels wide by 239 high. And then we don't have any padding, but we have a lower border, which you can see is this horizontal line in the sidebar. And then we've got a margin which clears area under that border of 20 pixels. And you can see that 20 pixels is coloured in when I move my mouse to the border, to the margin, sorry. So using this F12 feature, this inspector in Chrome, we can inspect the box models 
for any item on the page. So let's have a look at one more. What should we look at? Okay, this is the footer area of the page. Now you can see the footer area of the page is 1138 pixels wide by 44 pixels high. And that content box is where the text in the footer is located. We've then got padding top and bottom, which you can see if I move my mouse over. And we've got 40 pixels above and 40 pixels below to help space it out before we get to the border. And then we've just got a single border on the top. We don't have border on the left or the right or underneath, just on the top. And you can see that as the faint line on the web page preview. And then on the outside, we don't have any margins defined. So that's the box model. Let's have a look at some examples with LiveWeave. Okay, we've just got one header here, the box model, and I've told you that this text is inside a box. And there's a content box, and then outside that we've got padding, and then we've got a border, and then we've got more padding. And this allows us to better place the items within the web page and to align things properly. So let's actually see the box. We've got the H1 declared in the HTML. Let's create an H1 selector and create a declaration block and we can start adding the declarations. And the first thing, in order to visualize the box, let's go back to our original diagram. In order to visualize the box, we need to put in a border. And that border is the boundary of the visible portion. Between the border and the content is some padding, but we need to put a border in. So let's do that. And we're going to put in a simple border Just the default one that comes with LiveWeave. So it's a one pixel border. We can change that if we want to. You can make it a 10 pixel border if you wish. Let's just leave it at one. And you can also have dashed lines, dotted lines, and you can change the colors obviously. Okay, so we've now got a visual representation of the border inside which is the padding and also the content box. On the outside, we've got a margin and that margin is there to create some white space or some transparent space around the border. So let's put in a margin and you can see what happens to the box. Let's put in a 10 pixel border. Did you see the box move away and down? Let's just remove that and you can see again. And put it back. And delete it again. What's happening is we are putting this margin in around the outside. And so if we put 10 pixels here and 10 pixels here, 10 pixels here and 10 pixels here, then obviously this border is going to move down and to the left. So let's put it in again. In fact, let's change that to 50 pixels and then you can see it moves in and down quite a bit. So what we've got, we've got the border, which is the outline to the visible area. We've got a margin, which is spacing between the border and the outside or the next element next to it. And in the middle, we've got the content. Now between the content and the border, we've got padding. Which you can see here, between the content and the border, we've got padding. And so we can insert padding. If we want to have some white space between the border and the text, let's put some padding in. And let's say 20 pixels. Now you see we've got white space. 20 pixels, 20 pixels, 20 pixels, and there'll be 20 pixels here, but we're not going to the end of the line here. Let's put background color yellow. And you can see that the background color yellow fills the entire area. Now the padding and the margin, the padding is between the content and the border, and the margin is on the outside, are transparent. In other words, whatever color is behind it will show through. And because we've said H1 should be yellow, then the whole area, including the transparent padding, 
shows up as yellow. Now, one thing I should mention here, margin and padding. You can set the top, right, bottom and left margins and padding. And the way you would do that is if all of the items are the same, so in this case, margin or we want the margin 50 pixels all the way around, then we can just write the, pad, the, the, the value of the margin once, so 50 pixels. That tells the CSS, that tells the HTML, put a top margin, right, bottom and left margin of 50 pixels all the way around. And the same with padding. If you've only got one value there, then the padding is the same on all four edges. If we want to have separate padding or margin, top, right, bottom, left, think in the way the compass goes or a clock face goes, we can say, right, let's just put 50 pixels, 50 pixels, 50 pixels and 50 pixels. Now, that is exactly the same as saying just margin colon 50 pixels. We don't need these ones because all the values are the same. But let's try changing one of these. And you can see now this edge, let me just do that again and watch the right side of the box. See the edge comes in because we've now put a margin of 100 pixels on this edge. Think clock face. Always starting at the top, 12 o'clock. Top, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. This is the order that you see them listed here. And the same applies to the padding. Let's put 50 pixel padding all the way around. And you can see there's 50 pixels all the way around here. 50 pixels around here as well. Obviously this doesn't use up the whole line. It's not long enough to use up the whole line. But if we were to change one of them, so this is top, right, right, bottom, left. So top, right, bottom, left. If we were to increase the padding, if we were to increase the padding on this side to make the headline more central in the box, this is the left area, top, right, bottom, left. This is the item we would need to change for the padding. So let's try changing that to 100. And you can see that the title has moved over towards the middle of the box. 150 is about right. So in this little demonstration, we've seen that the H1 header is indeed in a box. And we can change the margin and the padding and add a border to visualize the box. And this can be quite useful when you come to create menus for your site like over on the one we saw earlier. Although, remember, we only had the right border being displayed for these items. And that really brings me to another point. We've defined the borders using a single command because we want the border all the way around. But you can, in fact, specify just the right border. So you've got border right, border top, border left, border bottom. Let's just specify the right border and we'll put it as a solid line. And now you can see the solid line on this side. So if you only want a border on the right or the top or the bottom or the left, but not everywhere, you can do that. You can just have border right, border top, border left and border bottom. And you'll also see you can individually specify the colors of those borders as well. So over on this site, what we've got here is, if I remember correctly, we've got a border right being declared. Let's have a look at the CSS just to make sure. I'm going to select menu item and just scroll down here until I can see it. Here we go. We've got border right, one pixel solid. And let's just change the color to make it a bit more visible. See, it's more visible now. And in fact, we'll play around with it even more. Let's say five pixels. You can see now that right border is five pixels. What I could do, of course, is just put a complete border around by changing border right to border. Let's put it back to one pixel. And you see now we've got a one pixel border around those items. You can see the padding. Now, if you looked closely at the padding, you'll see there's only two values there, whereas we were expecting four or just the one. 
Now, the reason we've only got two values is because the first value represents top and bottom, the second value represents right and left. It's a shorthand. If the top and bottom padding is the same, you can just put it as a single item. If the left and right padding is the same, you can put that as a single item. So this is saying top padding, bottom padding, 20 pixels, left padding, right padding, 24 pixels. And I'll just warn you here as well that you can also get three values. Let's just put in another value and you can see what happens. Okay, now we've got three values. When you've got three values, the central value is the left and right. The first value is the top, then the last value is the bottom. So in this case, we've got 20 pixels at the top, 30 pixels left and right, and 24 pixels on the bottom. You can see this is the left and right. If I increase it, let's say to 50, do you see how the padding on the left and the right has increased? And I can decrease that so you can see it again. There you can see there's very little padding on the left and the right. And the same applies to margins and the numbers you see with the margins. So in this tutorial, you've seen that all of the items on an HTML page are surrounded by a box. And that box is made up of several layers and we can control them. Some of those layers are transparent and are basically used to add some space between two different items. So the padding adds space between content and border, and then the margin will add space between the border and the next item on the HTML page. We've also seen that when we are defining the margin and the padding, we start at the top. If we're going to have the margin and the padding the same all the way around, then we can just use one value. So we can say margin 50 pixels, and that adds a 50 pixel margin all the way around. Same with padding. If we want to add a 20 pixel padding between the border and the content, we would just say padding colon 20 pixels. However, if we want to more closely control the margin or the padding, we can define four values. And those four values will be in the order of the clock face starting at 12 o'clock. First value is the top, second value, the right, third value, the bottom, fourth value, the left. You can also simplify it even further by having just two values. If the margin at the top and the bottom are the same, and the margin on the left and the right are the same, then you can include two values. The first value would be the top and bottom. The second value would be the left and right. And just think of the clock face again. Start at the top, and obviously the bottom mirrors the top. So two values, top is first, then the sides.